Today's story is about a Smith's voltage regulator, which little British cars used to convert 12, the battery voltage, which would be some voltage between 12, 14, sometimes 9 volts, into a regulated 10 volt supply for the fuel gauge. When these fail, what you notice is the fuel gauge suddenly starts reading off the top of full because it has too much voltage. And when I initially noticed this happening with my little car, after this thing ran for 50 years, I got on the normal boards and people said, oh yeah, that sounds like the voltage stabilizer has failed. But you can't measure it with a multimeter because the voltage, reg the voltage changes so much that the multimeters can't deal with it. I thought, why does the voltage change? So I took one apart to find out how these work and found out that it is an adjustable, entirely mechanical buck regulator. The regulator showed up in this little metallic can, and in order to get it out, I had to pry off these little tabs all the way around the outside, which was a huge pain in the neck. Mostly I used these needle nose pliers to get the very start of the can pulled apart and then I came in with the big lineman's pliers and used this to roll the rest of the tab over. So once I did that, I could take this entire assembly out, and then you can see the inside. So what we've got here is a green wire that is attached from the battery to ground that heats up. It's wrapped around a bimetallic strip. The bimetallic strip then has a contact over at the right, a point that opens and closes pretty rapidly. And what I think is so magical about here is about this is that you notice that point has a screw thread where it attaches. If you change the screw by adjusting it, then you can actually change the voltage that this regulates to, which I think is just absolutely magical. One of the consequences of that is that because this is a mechanical system with this arm moving back and forth, gravity affects how quickly the arm will move. So if you really want this precision adjusted, which is kind of pointless because it's in a car that's bouncing around, but work with me here, then you have to physically put this regulator in the same orientation and space that it's going to be when it's in use. So this whole thing is attached to the back of the speedometer because British are crazy. And that way, in order to replace it, you have to take out both the tachometer and the speedometer to get to this thing. They could have just attached it to the back of the fuel gauge, but they didn't do that. Here is my little buck regulator all hooked up. So if we go up here to the multimeter, we see that it's all over the place. You might assume that that was 10 volts. I don't know. We go over here to the power supply that's powering it. You can see the current here is jigging on and off with, I don't know, some some uh, some frequency. Who knows? If I turn the current down very very carefully, I can get it to a point where it will go into constant current mode every time that the contact closes. And so it's sitting here ticking away. We'd really like to see what frequency this actually is. If we come over here to the scope, you can see that, man, this is not a well-regulated system. There are larger and smaller uh, pulse widths. There are double pulses. I'll slow it down one and see if we can get it to actually take some parameters on this thing. Sometimes it'll give me a frequency on it. And when it does give me a frequency, it would show up here under period. It's about 500 milliseconds. I don't think it's going to manage to find one right now, which is a shame. Here's another attempt to get it to measure. And you can see in a period every once in a while there will be a number. And right now it's showing about 100 milliseconds as the switching period. Earlier I've seen it as high as 500 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds. Here's my poor little Spitfire with the speedometer and tachometer out. When I took this apart and started poking at it a little bit, what I found was the actual reason for the problem. It's very difficult to focus on this, but right here at the top, 
this little insulated wire has lost some of its insulation. So it is grounding right from ground to this thing without this entire wire being in the circuit anymore. And as a result, there's no heating, so it never opens. So I probably could fix that by putting a little tiny bit of insulation in there, but the way I chose to fix it is to put in a modern semiconductor-based uh, voltage regulator that's just a simple Bach regulator, and it should last for another 50 years.